So hard tissue injuries, they're going to include fractures and dislocations, and we're going to have a look at how they're managed. So fractures, there are multiple types of fractures, and you'll, you'll see here the simple green stick compound impacted and comminuted. Okay, we'll have a closer look at these. So this is a simple break, a straight complete break of the bone, two pieces. Uh, this one broke on an oblique angle. If you want to be technical, you can call it an oblique break. Um, but this is a simple break, just a straight break of the bone. This is a green stick or a partial break. Okay, there's only a small break here in the uh, bone. It does not break the whole way through. This is a compound break. Uh, it's called a compound break because the bone is actually sticking out of the skin. Now, I didn't show you an actual image of this because it's, I know some of you might get a bit queasy, but uh, if you break your bone and you break it badly, it can um, actually protrude out of your skin. That's a compound break. This is a comminuted break. A comminuted break essentially means that there was more than one break. So in this broken uh, arm, and this is a broken humerus, you can see that there's actually pieces of bone. So there's about there's at least three pieces of bone I can see there that have been broken. It's kind of a spiral break. It's kind of wrapped itself around the bone so the, the break goes a longer distance through the bone. Uh, and that's actually gonna require normally surgery to, so that those uh, pieces that are kind of floating around end up in the right spot uh, and that the spiral matches itself back up nicely uh, in terms of that kind of a break. And the last one is an impacted break. A lot harder to get an impacted break, but essentially uh, it means that someone has squashed your bone and one end has gone in kind of inside the other. Doesn't happen very often, um, but when it does happen, requires someone to kind of pull the bone out, uh, align it all up again, can require surgery. In terms of the signs and symptoms of, um, of broken bones, we're looking at hearing or feeling some kind of a break. So either the, if you ask the athlete, did you hear something? Do, did you, do you think you've broken it? They'll normally be able to say, yes, I heard it. Particularly if it's a big bone, like if you break your femur, you've heard it, right? If you break your humerus, you're gonna hear it. It's a big bone. The break, if it's, gonna, if it's a nice clean break, it's gonna hurt. And it's gonna be very clear sound, uh, a snapping or cracking. Uh, of the bone. There'll be plenty of pain that comes with a broken um, bone, particularly if you put ice on it. So in the dealing and the management of uh, broken bones, you'll notice we're not going to talk about putting ice on it because if you put ice on a broken bone, it'll actually make it hurt more. It'll start to throb. Deformity uh, can also occur. So if you look at the area that was broken and compare it to the other side, uh, often there'll be some kind of deformity. Not always going to be swelling because with any broken bone, there's damage uh, to muscles and also to your bone cells and so your body's automatic reaction is to swell up the inflammatory response there not just for soft tissue injuries also for hard tissue injuries and then of course you get loss of function you're not going to be able to use that bone uh, properly so let's have a look at an example here There was a horrific moment at the Rio 2016 Olympics. A French gymnast by the name of Samir Ait Said had his dreams crushed as he broke his leg while landing on a vault. You could literally hear the snap of his bone echo through the arena. Eventually he was wheeled off and as he was heading out, he raised his arm to acknowledge the crowd that was giving him a very loud ovation. But after showing clear signs that he was in excruciating pain, Samir, however, seemed pretty calm as he was being tended to. But what more could you do anyways, right? Might as well face the fact that it's over. Wish him as speedy of a recovery as possible. Now this injury means that Said will have to leave the Olympics early and he was also expected to compete in the men's parallel bars, the individual all round, the team all round, floor exercise, rings, and the pommel horse. Be sure to keep it tuned here on Daily Break TV for all your Rio 2016 Olympic highlights and more. The other type of uh, hard tissue injury are dislocations. So dislocations are gonna have plenty of signs and symptoms here. Kind of similar, pain, swelling, deformity, poor movement. Okay, uh, you'll see the images that I've got here. Uh, the rugby player on the right dislocated shoulder. Okay, it's quite clear because that's how he carries his arm. Often people who dislocate their shoulder will automatically put it across their body and support it. Okay, or they'll leave their arm kind of hanging uh, and that's essentially because the actual shoulder joint is dislocated and they don't want to move it and your body doesn't want to move it. Another example there is a finger. Often fingers will dislocate. Uh, I know I've seen videos from rugby league and stuff uh, where people will just pop that finger straight back on. 
Uh, but one of the key things with the management of dislocations is not to relocate the injury because if you relocate it, you run the risk of pinching nerves, pinching arteries and causing a lot further damage. Uh, only if you are qualified do you ever relocate uh, any kind of dislocation. So when we're looking at management, goals for management include uh, immobilize the area, reduce the pain, uh, prevent further damage. So that's part of why you're immobilizing the area is because you don't want it to, uh, if you move it, you're going to cause further damage to the bone and the surrounding tissue. Uh, reducing pain normally is about uh, putting someone in a comfortable position, supporting uh, the injured area. You want to then reduce uh, bleeding and shock. So if someone uh, is bleeding in the area, whether it's quite clear from the swelling and bruising, or if there's actually like a a compound fracture and the skin has been punctured, you want to make sure you control bleeding. Uh, you also want to look after the player in terms of shock. Uh, so you'll remember recently at the Olympics, uh, there was a gymnast who broke his leg and you could see that it was kind of hanging sideways. Uh, that gymnast is going to be in a fair bit of shock uh, from looking at that. So not only will they feel the pain, but their body will then send blood all to their main organs uh, in order to kind of do like a flight or survive type uh, response, but it can be very dangerous shock. So make sure we're treating and looking out and watching out uh, for that kind of uh, complication. When we're looking at fractures, always Dr. ABCD. We're doing that for everything. Anytime you're managing any kind of injury or assessing any kind of injury, first aid is always first and comes before the injury. Okay, so checking for danger to yourself, response from the athlete or from the person, um, making sure you send for help if you need it, checking airways, breathing, etc. You want to make sure that is under control first, then control bleeding, make sure wounds are covered and looked after, check for any other injuries, uh, keep the casualty still or uh, essentially kind of immobilizing the bit that's broken. Uh, you want to handle them gently, okay? So if you need to move the leg slightly in order to put the splint on or you want to put the arm into a sling, Okay, make sure that that movement is slow and smooth and gentle. And then, of course, you want to make sure you seek some medical attention, get it assessed, get an x-ray done, all that kind of stuff to make sure that it's looked after properly. And then there's dislocations. So with a dislocation, you want to, again, doctors A, B, C, D, do not move the joint. Okay, try and keep it kind of still. Check for circulation past the joint. You want to make sure that the dislocated bone is not um, on an artery, stopping blood from getting to the fingers or something or getting to the toes because that adds further complications to your issue. Uh, you need to support the area, whether that be with a sling or some kind of um, just holding the person's arm, getting them to lie down and or something. Whatever you're doing, making sure it's supported so that the person's muscles aren't holding it still. Uh, you can apply ice packs to a dislocation. Okay, so a dislocation ice, it shouldn't cause... Um, more injury, it'll help reduce the inflammation. A dislocation will also normally result in torn ligaments, uh, torn tendons, torn muscles. So lots of soft tissue injuries that actually happen with a dislocation as well. So you wanna make sure you get some ice on there and of course do not relocate uh, that dislocated uh, joint. You don't wanna pinch a nerve, you don't wanna pinch a blood vessel. You wanna make sure that the person is well looked after and not put into a more complex and complicated situation. And here, of course, we've got a few different ways that you can provide support uh, for a broken or dislocated um, joint. You've got slings, you've got um, some splints, you've got taping of fingers to other fingers. Uh, essentially, they're just examples of ways to support any kind of hard tissue injury. So that's our management of hard tissue injuries. And that's our look at hard tissue injuries. So we've had a look at fractures and the different types and how to manage them. Uh, the signs and symptoms of them, same for dislocations. Uh, so just remembering no ice for fractures, you can use ice for dislocations, okay? And then always keeping them immobile, trying to reduce the pain, uh, make sure you don't cause any further damage, make sure the person is comfortable, control bleeding, all that kind of stuff. But as always, doctors A, B, C, D is always gonna come first in any kind of management of any injury. Oh.